cold. Amen. I turn. Snap your hands and give God praise. From the warm cold. Today, 
same thirst. Do you thirst for God? Do you thirst for a deeper relationship in the Lord? Are you happy where you are right now? Do you want to go deeper? Do you believe that you can go deeper? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I wonder, I just want to just take a look real quick. The Bible says, Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said thy thirst. If you can turn with me real quick to uh, Genesis 22 and 12. I just want to take a, a real deep look at this thing here. Because there's a reason why we are going through our wilderness. How long will you wander in the wilderness? How long will you continue to go through the same thing over and over? How long will you be happy where you are? Hallelujah, Jesus. And the Bible said, And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do, thy, do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. What Jesus is saying to us today, now I know. Jesus knowing that all things was accomplished said, now I know because you thirsted for me in the midst of your wilderness experience, now I know I can trust you with the keys of heaven. Because you didn't succumb to the things that made you stumble and fall before. You didn't fall at, at, at that financial spot that made you run and go get a drink. Now you're falling on your knees in the midst of that. Now you're thirsty for me in the midst of that. And God is saying unto you, now I know I can trust you in my anointing. Now I know I can trust you to teach my word. Now I know I can trust you to pray over somebody. Now I know that I can see you and I can see you in spirit and in power. Now I know I can see you in the might of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I came today to tell somebody here prophetically that God is speaking to you right now in the midst of your situation. God is saying that if you will make the decisions of purity and holiness while you're in the midst of your trial, while you're in the midst of your mess, God today is saying he will bring you out in spirit and in power and in a deeper dimension of the anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many receive that today? Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thirst for Jesus Christ and his holiness. Hallelujah, I thirst for Jesus Christ and righteousness. On his holy word I stand, because all of the ground is seeking sin. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, I thirst for you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. That the Bible says, after this, after we have chosen righteousness and purity in the middle of our situation, after we have chosen the peace of God in depression, which made us go seek the wrong kind of love. After we have chosen God, rather than that alcohol or whatever your vice is, after we have chosen God, after people have talked about us and we bent our knees, after we have been done wrong on the job and we came and sought the face of God, after this, God said that now I know. Now I know that you love me. And to love the God is not to say it with your lips, but it is through actions by the decisions that you make for his righteousness and his purity. God said, now I know that you will obey me, and to obey the Lord is to love God. He says, now I know. Just look at somebody and say, now I know. That the scripture might be fulfilled. What God is wanting me to say to you today that when you choose God in the midst of your mess, and you use the word of the Lord to defeat the enemy, that's when you obtain your anointing. That's when you obtain the power to defeat the enemy. That's when God trusts you. Hallelujah, with his power. That is when the scripture is fulfilled. Hallelujah, Jesus. So if you choose to stay in God's presence, if you choose to have enough God as you want, then God will pour out his blessings upon you. But this is not an easy word. This is something that is not going to take one time to do. This is a lifestyle. And it comes to you through prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. You only get this through a personal relationship with God. You only get this through reading your Bible. You only get this through spending time in God with prayer. You only get power publicly from your prayer privately with Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, Rabbi 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to do an inner inspection. Because sin is the only thing that can separate us from our holy God. We God don't walk away from us. We walk away from God. And I came tonight at the repair of the breach. Hallelujah, Jesus. I came to help you put the pieces back together. Because it was so long ago when I had to, had to have my breach repaired. Hallelujah. And somebody had to come and grab me by the hand and say, this is where you lost it. You didn't lose it in the pulpit. You didn't lose it, hallelujah, going out and evangelizing. But you lost it on your knees before God in prayer. And it's time for us to get back to prayer. It is time for us to get back to a personal relationship with God. It is time for us to get back to seeking the face of God. It is time for us to get back to putting God first. It is time for us to return to God. It is time for us to return to the main purpose that God had given us. God didn't create man because he was lonely. God created man, hallelujah, to give him authority on the earth. This is a prison planet, and we are supposed to be the wardens. God wants us to return to a place where we have unhindered access to him. God wants us to return to a place that in our personal prayer life, we can walk with God through the cool of the day. God wants us to return to him, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, that Messiah. To a place where there's no reassurance is needed. Hallelujah. God wants us to return to a place where he can speak to us face to face. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many want to go deeper tonight? How many want to go deeper tonight? There is a revival that is coming to the earth. God is about to display his glory upon the earth. And only the ones who have taken time and repentance and with God in prayer will be filled with the Spirit. And when this revival happens, it's going to be twofold. To the ones who, have, who are holy, to the ones who have chosen to walk with God, to the ones who have thirsted for God, those are going to be the ones that will be prophesying and laying hands on the sick. But for the ones who have denied God, it will be a great and terrible day. Hallelujah, Jesus. And God told me to tell you that his judgment will start first in the church. First, we got to get ourselves together. First, we got to get the sin out of our lives so we can come into the presence of God. How long will you wander in the wilderness? How long will you see the power of God manifest before you, before you make a turn to Jesus? How long will we struggle with sickness and disease? How long, how long, how long? Look at your neighbor and say, not long, because tonight I'm going to fix it. Tonight I'm going to get it together. Tonight I'm going to go deeper in the Lord. Tonight, 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 tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want everybody to stand while we pray real quick. Hallelujah. Oh, Somebody right now has been dealing with something in their past that has been hindering them from coming to God. Oh, I want to let you know that God loves you. God loves you tonight. Oh, Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, I pray for every single one of us, God, that we will not be the same after tonight, God. We will not remain complacent, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you fill us with the fullness of God. That you fill us with your spirit, oh God. Lord God, let your fire fall in our lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, I pray for intimacy in our lives, oh God. Father God, I pray for a God in Canada that will so wreck everybody's life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you receive